Celestia Rivera. My view is they would have preferred to have kept. You're going to get an incident. It's most likely to be when the cars are this close together, and that could lead to them burning some of the time of the quickest rider. On board with our into Europol competition LMP2 car, car number 34, and being started by Alex Brundle the Toyota lockout of the front row. Red lights are on. Holding their speed, and away we go. The Tricolor flies. We are racing at Monza, round three of the FIA World Endurance Championship. Toyota 1-2 on the grid, Alpine, and then the two Glickenhaus cars right behind. Side by side they go, nobody wants to concede here, it's a little bit of a traffic jam as ever, and the Alpine moves up to second place, uh, no change at the front. D2s, there's another battle, Toyota's slow, yeah. and uh, the Alpine needs to try to make this move, Graham, very, very early. Absolutely, well, trying to put the car under pressure now. The crowd jumped the same match, their rivals on pace, went on fuel, and that was the deciding factor in the race balance. They beat them on fuel economy. Yeah, they had the safety car of the second Lesbo crash. That caused the red flag. It wasn't restarted. And uh, that compromised that car significantly because it had to start from the back of the LMP category grid. At the same time as well, damaged the tyres. And he's got such a limited number, that's going to compromise them all the way. Kobe Albuquerque is now seven seconds back. Have a listen to what's going on with the number eight. No, we're not going to hear that. Charbeel racing car. I think about to have a lap put on it by the 28. No, this is actually the Risi Competizione. Apologies, I've got misidentified now. So this is the battle. We, we talked about this a while ago, weren't we? It's now Ryan Cullen aboard the Risi car. Sean Galeo taking over the Jota car. This is for position, and this is for, uh, for fourth position, isn't it? And Galeo's just done it round the outside. A little bit hairy at the end when he started to get into the apex but uh, he's managed to get themselves up in uh, to fourth position. And so now it's Jota up into fourth, and Da Costa is in the other Jota car that started last, as we are now seeing. Different manufacturers, and Graham, on pace, that is the first time we've had that this season. Uh, absolutely, and, you know, we, again, we said at the top of the show, you have to be perfect here. You know, these, these cars are only going to get better as things come through. Yep. So at the moment, large-ish gaps, but what we've got are three healthy cars at the top of Tavica scoring. We've got another car that's way down up to ninth now for the second Lincoln House on this fight back from now just other Menezes bought, bought the 7 8. But that yep. car is healthy in the 38s. A one moment, very unhealthy Toyota indeed, that's not something we've been able to say for quite some time. <laughs> I know, I know. Racing Team Netherlands, Fritz van Aert, the gentleman driver in that car, the boss of Jumbo Supermarkets, of course, you've seen his car red light at the end of the pit lane, will they be able to leave? They're going to get caught out, big off for the 38 Jota car, big off. Wow, that's full rally cross spec there. <sighs> that was Antonio Felix da Costa, yeah. kept his foot in it over the gravel. Three laps for pits close on the same Hydration season. back up, so he was really, really struggling, struggling. and in fact, um, Scott Dixon, his teammate, had to get out after, you know, halfway through a stint because exactly the same reason he was completely dead. So the thing is a furnace, but you do need that fluid, you need that hydration to keep your focus, otherwise the brain starts to shut down. That's not ideal at these speeds. No, it's not. Here, it's not too bad being very fine. you might have thought. Yeah, we saw Antonio de Costa bring it back in. Uh, there's a misfire issue. The team sent it back out, thought they had it sorted, and right now it's just pulled up in front of me. They've got the dollies ready, so they expected they had to bring it back in, and that looks like it's a challenge, but you've got to manage it. That's no part of the game. This, by the way, Martin, is a bit of a battle. Ninth overall, sixth in LMP2. Dennis Anderson, bronze driver in the number 20 high class racing team, uh, trying to fend off the close attentions of the less delayed of the two Jota Sport cars. Tom Longfist it is, but he's struggling there as we've got the uh, WRT car, Charles Malaysi, catching them to put a lap on this battle. Yeah. Um, hoving up behind at a fair old rate. That's sort of almost a scandy battle, isn't it? Dennis Anderson is a Dane. Tom Longfist's dad, Stig, was, uh, is a Swede. 
Tommy's uh, is uh, a British license holder. Mm -hmm. Good stuff at LMP2 through this, but yep. uh, with some misfortune from some of these teams, the strategy has thrown, I think, a couple of these teams off kilter a little. And is this going to delay Sharma Lazy? Because this is something of a spirited battle. He needs to find clear air to try to close the gap on Fabio Scherer, who, by the way, is driving very well indeed. Laps in the 140s. Hang on a minute. Where's Roman Duma in 709? This is very interesting. Roman Duma lighting up the timing screen line. It's hyperpole. Purple sector one, purple sector two, which means for the uninitiated, the fastest sectors of the entire race for anybody in any car. Fastest lap of the race at the moment goes to Mark Conway uh, in the number seven car. 137, 158. That came on lap six. We're now on lap 119. How hey. close on either side of that mark is Roman Dumas going to be? Formula One with your sprint race. Hold my beer. Absolutely. Since World Endurance. Here we go. R Roman Dumas, by the way, who will start his 21st consecutive Le Mans 24 hours this year, he has not missed Le Mans in this century. Got held up in the final sector. It wasn't the best. 137.265, the quickest lap for that car. But here comes Charles Milesi putting a lap on this battle. Has he got the overlap on Dennis Anderson on the inside? He does. Can he get by? He nope. can't, but he jumps Tom Blomqvist. And that's a momentary respite for Dennis Anderson in the number 20 high-class car. But Milesi goes the long way around the outside in Curva Grande, Biasone. I'll add into this, by the way, uh, as we're watching this spirited LMP2 battle, second and third place cars are catching the leader. Without a doubt, they're catching the leader. It's 14 seconds the leader now. They're taking about a second out of that. It is under tw it's 27 seconds for the top three now. This is not done. There is no rest here whatsoever <laughs> for Toyota. They're going to have to push. They really are, aren't they? And, uh, that, I mean, that's the case in all of these classes. GT Pro, if you blink, you've given away victory. And they're, they're, it's as simple as that. And here we go. There is the pass that Tom Blomqvist wanted. You work hard enough. It's the persistence that gets it. That and the speed of the driver. He goes by the high-class racing entry. Good stuff from Dennis Anderson, though. This yep. is big progress for the Danish gentleman driver. Um, it's been a part of the high-class racing efforts. Gusto Farfus. Uh, one of the Dempsey Proton cars, is that 77 or 88? It's the 88, 88, that's the 88, 88 car. Trying to unlap himself from this yeah. pair. And through comes the Jota car. It's a 28 car of Stoffel Van Dorn.